Alrighty, guys, so this is Dave Santorelli. Uh, we're in the live trade room at the Santorelli Exchange, and we're doing this quick webinar here to go over a few of the members asked, how do you find some day trades? I'm going to go over two setups right now um, on how I find day trades, how you do some day trades, and what to look for. All right, so first off, I don't want to leave it as a blank chart. This is a uh, DIA. This is the one minute. <clears throat> I'm going to keep it at that for now. Uh, and then I'm going to show you guys once we change that. But let's say first off, this is the 20 day SMA here. I always have my 20 day SMA as this color blue. All right. So that's all that's on here now. All right. Now, what I wanted to tell you guys, this is what we want to trade. We want to trade this area right here. See that nice breakout? maybe uh, trade this area here and then we want to trade this area right here so there's three areas on today's diamond ETF that we could have day traded for substantial profits okay and I'm going to show you guys simply what the entry exit and targets are it cannot get any simpler than this but you have to understand that you have to have the patience and understanding the discipline to know when is the right time because you could get false signals like right here. We're looking at candles, guys. I'm telling you. Um, I'm telling you that we're going into more detail than you've ever been taught before. Look at this. So first off, to enter into a breakout mode like this to capture some nice returns for day trading, what are we looking for? Number one, uh, you see on these failed entries here, uh, you know, these are your no trade zones. When it's trading between the SMAs, trading between the SMAs, that's your no trade zone. You either want a clear breakout or a clear breakdown. And I'm going to show you what a breakdown is later. But to take advantage of a day trade like this and like this, what we're looking for is now we're going to add our 10 day SMA. I want you guys to see this. Moving average, we'll put the 10 day as the yellow. And watch what's going to pop up. Now we have an entry area and a target area. Okay. Now the first time we're entering is a move above that 10-day or the 20-day SMA. So, all right, guys. So like I was saying, we get rid of this 10-day SMA here. Here's what we're looking for, these breakouts, right? Now what do we do? Let's add the 10-day SMA on here. Simple moving averages. Let's add the 10 day. I always make my 10 day a yellow. We're going to do that. Now we have an entry signal and an exit signal. Whenever you're trading with SMAs, <coughs> you're using your larger SMA as your entry and your smaller SMA as your exit. So as you can see here, we're entering when it crosses above the 20 day SMA and we're closing when it crosses below the 10 day. So in this case, you could see clearly that we got these signals. See, trading is looking for a system, guys, that can work and make you money. If you don't have any of these, let me delete these studies here. When you're looking at a chart like this, what the hell is that telling you? You know, it's just mumbo jumbo. So what we're trying to do is make a system, and that's what our trade plan is for. We're making a system that works and that we follow in detail. So like I said, first we're adding the 20-day SMA. That's going to be the blue. And that's going to be our entry signals. When we cross above, that's going to be our entry. Now we're adding the 10-day SMA. Now what's happening? That's going to be our exit. So right here, for example, right here, for example, we got to cross above the 10 and 20 day SMA. This was our entry right here at 246.85. Where was our exit? When it crossed below. It could have been here, and then we could have entered back in, and then we could add another signal. And guys, this is also why I say you have to watch uh, the previous candle. When you get a candle that goes below the previous candle's low, that is a sign that the momentum has shifted. So that's one um, day trading strategy is using the SMAs here. And you could use that on a one-day intraday chart 
or we could use that on like the six month chart. And this is what I wanted to go over now, guys. Just because we're up today 360 points, here's the diamond ETF right now um, for the past, you know, several weeks here since, you know, since October 3rd, we've just been on a decline. And what's been happening, guys, we've been failing to break above this 10 day. So just because we're up today, don't think that we're just going to start heading higher now. We're in a downward momentum. This is what we're looking for, this downward momentum. See up here the breakout momentum where we're trading above the SMAs? Here we are now down below the 20-day, 10-day. This is downward momentum. This is breakdown momentum, guys. So you have to understand that. Here we're seeing breakout momentum. We're now in breakdown momentum. But what we're doing is we're looking for a cross above 10 20 day just like you've seen back here guys you know we are in breakout momentum this is breakdown momentum and it's simple the dow's up around 340 points right now but we're still not we're still not crossing above those estimates so we go on today's chart like i said you're getting clear signs if we're looking at so back to this morning guys just like i said day trade strategy number one is a break above uh, the 20 day and then a candle below the 10 day and you can see you're capturing nice gains so here's our entry signal our our selling signal up here to close the trade right here okay that's a simple day trade strategy just like right here if you're trading calls on the diamond etf you're getting in at 248.27 watch now what we can do is we can actually track how much an option made from right here at this exact point to if we sold here we could see what that option actually would have made and we can do that by let's see here let's go with like the 247 strike we would do the weekly so 247.50 so remember these times right here okay remember uh, let's remember 942 that would have been our entry 942 and our exit is at let's say 10 p.m. so 942 and 10 p.m. let's take a look now Here's the actual option chain for this Diamond October 16, 247.50 strike call. This is what's incredible, guys. You can actually chart your options itself. So let's say, what do we say, 942? Here was our entry at 942. This is where the stock was at. See these marks here? This is where it traded out, how much it costed. So at 942, it was at $1.86. So write that down here. You can see a dollar 86 that would have been your entry point okay now if we sold it what time did we say we sold it at 10 o'clock right or let's go right before even to this red candle right here uh, just to you know make things accurate how much was that 220 so from a dollar 86 entry to 220 how much of a return is that and this is a simple day trade and just following those steps that I just went over. So 2.2, divide that by 1.86. If you only had $1,000 into that trade, you just made a quick $183 in just a short, you know, uh, 17 minutes. You know, $186 in, in 15 minutes, that's not bad. And that's only on a $1,000 trade. Now imagine if you put $10,000 into that trade. Let's calculate that. $10,000. Um, let's do $15,000 because, you know, that's, you know, larger guys here, larger traders. That's usually what we're doing. $15,000, divide that by 186, our entry. That would have given us 80.65 contracts. Multiply that by 220. So that 15,000 is now worth 17,742. So you made $2,742 on a $15,000 day trade. And those are what those are the strategies you're looking for, guys. Get, let me get this out of here. And just like over here, same thing. Here was our entry on the third part of the wave here. We said here was our first entry, we got another signal here and the third signal over here. So if we got in the entry here at this price, that was around 230. 
230 up to 305. Let's see what that would have been. That was a larger climb there. 3.05, divide that by 2.3. If you just traded $1,000 into this wave here, you made three, $326 on that. So 326 here and 180 there, you just made $500 day trading, a simple strategy, only using $1,000 capital. How can you beat that? That's why I'm telling you guys and been trying to teach you guys, it's important to look at it's important to look at the charts. Look at the SMAs. Look at here on Google. Here's clear entry and exits. Entry above the 20-day, okay? Exit on the candle below. Here's entry. Here's exit. Again here, here's entry. Here's exit. Let's take a look now, guys. Let's take a look at the queues because text earnings are uh, today. As I'm talking here, the NASDAQ is climbing. See, right now, the NASDAQ, the Q's here, that's in breakout mode. That's a buy signal. Your buy signal was right here at 170.17, and it's still climbing. You know, this 10-day, notice this, guys. When you get the entry here, notice how they're combined here. Notice how the 20 days meet up with the 10. Here's your entry. Your exit is a close below or a candle below the 10-day. So here's your exit. Here is your buy. Here is your exit. First off, a big candle. We got a big candle than the previous three here. Okay, so that's a sign that momentum is shifting. We're going higher here. Okay, when you're trading between the SMAs, that's a no-go, no trade. All right, back here, what happened? We traded, uh, we're above the, well, if you got in at the entry, um, in the morning time, I'm going to go over the 15-minute opening range with you guys next. That's the next one. All right, so this first day trade strategy, this is trading SMAs, and it's a very simple strategy, guys. Here's your entry. Here's your exit, okay? Here's your entry. Here's your exit. Here's your entry. An exit would be once the stock right here, this candle, crosses below this yellow line, and as you notice, it still needs to take time to get up there. So this is going to continue to rise. And you can see that on the chart here. You know, this is why this strategy works so well. And this is the same concept I'm teaching you guys in the trade room during the day is how to chart and find these types of breakouts. These are the breakouts you want to trade. Do you want to be in a trade where you're entering here and you're going up, down, sideways, not doing much? No. So what are we doing to capture these large moves here? These large moves, these large moves, that large move. What are we doing? We have a system. We have an SMA system that we're using that's going to help us capture that. All right, so that's how we use SMAs. Now, guys, let me tell you, you can fine-tune these by using different SMAs. For example, if we want a tighter stop, watch what happens if we put the five-day SMA in. So let's change this to a five-day. Let's make this a white one, and let's see. Now look at how tighter our stops got if we wanted to do that. So now we got our entry right here, and then our stop is when we get a close below this white line. So right here we got a close instead of like over here. Over here we got our entry above the 20-day. The now we could use either the white 5-day SMA as our stop. And you can see, let's watch this as it goes here actually. Because we could either use the five day for a tighter stop or a tw or the ten day for a you know larger stop. So how does that work? Well, if the strength is strong, then it's going to continue to climb above and stay above this white five day SMA. Okay. If it's a weaker climb, it might come down to the ten day or the twenty day. So depending on the strength of the climb, that's going to tell us um, you know how much it's going to increase here now let's see if this candle stays above this uh, five day SMA right here if that does if it bounces there then that's an entry point to buy more because you know you're in a strong climb here and I'm looking at the markets now Nasdaq's up 2.72 percent up 193.3 and the Dow's up 372.23 and still climbing 376 now now watch this. If this is a green candle here, you're going to see. Again, this is, it's, we're trading right now live breakout momentum. This is breakout momentum. And this is a day trade strategy using the SMA, guys.
You know, you got your RSI or you got your MACD crossover that confirms it. And look at this too, guys. Look at how we're using the indicators down below to give us confirmation checklist. Okay. So our checklist is a, a climb above the 20 day. That's our entry. Our close is either five or 10 day SMA on the intraday one day chart. One minute here. And then look at the MACD. Whenever we want to trade, we also want to cross over the white above the red. That's a MACD crossover here. So we're looking for that. We got that. And then also the MACD. That tells us when the strength is over. When the white crosses below the red, that's a sign, hey, this trend is over. So right here, you got that crossover. If you didn't exit by here, you kept going lower. Do you guys understand now why it's so important to follow a strategy? I've been teaching you guys the details of everything, and it's all on YouTube. So please check that out. Now see here, we got down to the, once you cross that five day, or the, tw or the 10 day, the yellow one, that could have been your exit point. And that should have been your exit point. You don't want to go back down to the 20 day, because then you see you're losing some of your profits. The tighter you are, even if you got, you know, I wouldn't go any less than the five day, but you know, here's your entry. And then once it crosses below that white five day or that 10 day, that's when you want to exit, take your profits, move on to the next trade. So that's trade style number one for day trading uh, stock or options. And it works with shares of stock. It works with options. The system's a beautiful system. You know, you can't beat it. There's defined entries, defined exits. And all you have to do is be patient enough to wait for them. A lot of people like trading in between this garbage. This is just shit. If you're trading between here, you're not getting anywhere. And you're going to be one of those 90% that blows their account. There's a reason why 90% fail, guys. You know, you have to understand that you need to follow a system. And that's what I've been going over in these YouTube videos. Follow the system. Okay? Now let's take a look at the Diamond ETF. And like I said, guys, this is what I'm looking for now. Um, I don't, you know, just like we had the breakout momentum here. You guys seen how we climbed. We came down to the SMAs and then we bounced, came down and bounced. That's breakout momentum. Now we shifted. Do you see how the SMAs here played a crucial role for us, guys? You see that we crossed below the SMAs here and then what happened? We started going lower. And then what happened even further, we dropped and then we got up to the SMA and then we dropped further. Okay, now let's see when that happened last, okay, where we went from breaking out and then we failed to break above. Okay, you guys understand what I'm saying here, right? Where we're failing to break above and let's also put on our, let's say the 50 day and let's use the 200 day. Because I want to show you guys something extremely important here. This is a lesson you will keep the rest of your life. Now take a look. Notice, this is the 200-day SMA. Okay. Notice we are still below that. That's a very bearish sign, guys. Tech, is, tech might be a catalyst to push us further. But as long as we're below this, guys, it's bearish. All right. Now let's take a look. I want to show you guys. See here, every time we've been coming down to the 200-day but bouncing off. We are below and now failing to break above. All right, let's take a look when that happened last, when we went below that 200-day SMA. Okay, take a good picture of what this looks like now. See how we were coming down to the 200, bouncing, climbing, bouncing, climbing off the 200. Now what happens, and this is why it's important for us to be watching this 50-day if it crosses below this 200-day. Now watch. What happens when we go below that 200-day? You could see, you know, look at how long it's been since we've done this. Look at how long it's been. This is why I'm saying, guys, you know, you haven't traded this type of market. Now look, we've always been above that 200-day for quite some time, 2017. Now we're in 2016. All right, now take a look. We cross below it. So that pink line, that's that 200-day. We're just right here right now on it. This is why I'm saying if you're looking down, you know, a few months from now, this is 7-1 of 2015. 
And then on 825 of 2015, you know, a, a month and a half later, you know, she was much lower than where she was at here. Now let's go back a little bit further. I want to show you guys something important. Let me go back, go back. Notice up here, this is back before the financial collapse. We're at this point right now. See where we're at right now, where we're just below? This is back in November of 2007. This was 11 years ago. We're just right now crossing below that SMA. We're seeing the 50-day head lower. And then, like I said, guys, what happened when that 50-day crossed below that 200-day? Look at what happened. And let me make this you know, bigger here so you could actually see because that was pretty tight. So when we crossed below, we were at 133, 134, okay? And then we crossed below that 200-day, the 50-day crossed below the 200-day. And let's get rid of all this other stuff here. We don't need these. That's just going to confuse you. We could keep the 20-day. All right, so we got that signal. We're right here right now in the current market situation. This is why I'm saying it's important for us to see us cross above that 20-day right now, which tech earnings might give us that catalyst. But right now, we're at this point right now, okay? Markets, guys, and I, I just want you to be aware that I'm looking at the markets right now to make sure nothing's going on. You always have to be alert and, and know your surroundings and your conditions. So right now, the Dow's up 300, NASDAQ's up 171, S&P's up 40.66. So I'm keeping my eyes on that, and I'm also teaching here. So like I said, guys, what happened when we crossed below? Look at this. What was the date? The date was 1227 of 2007. Okay. Now... Look it, it went up to the 50-day, failed, came down. It went up to the 200-day, failed, and it came down. Tried to break above the 50-day, failed, consolidated, consolidated, failed. And what happened? It dropped lower. And that was on, what day did we say? 1227 of 2007. And then look, guys, look at what happened. Because I want you to understand, just because the market might go up like here, in this case, it went up from uh, March 14th to 519. We're still in a downward trend, okay? So if you have a trade right here, it, let's, say you bought some, uh, let's say you bought some Amazon calls for four months out, right? Okay, you might have a profit here two months in, but what happens four months out at Expo? You're done. You lost your money. It's a, it's a dead trade. You lost your entire money. That's why we need a system and a plan to know when to take profits, when to enter, when to exit, and where our stops are. And that's the detail I've been going over with you guys, how to find your stops, your entries, and your targets. Okay? And we can use this with SMAs, RSI, MACD. That could help us. And then just like some of the members in the trade room, they, they're showing the uh, Elliott waves. You know, the more stuff you do that gives you confirmation, the better. You know, you just have to understand each, each trade has its own time frame. Just like Walmart, guys. You know, like, look at Walmart. You know, we just took our profits on Costco. We made two Walmart trades. Uh, granted, they were small trades for now because I still want to see what the markets are doing. But this trade, for example, only costed $2,210. This trade right here costed $3,100. Okay? So that's a total of $5,310. So I invested $5,310. How much did I make so far? So $1575. So I made $1,575 profit, okay? Now, what's the return rate on that? Yes, this trade made a 40.67% return. This one made 14%. Actually, this is going to be much higher because Walmart increased since then. But let's take a look, okay? So if it's worth five, if it's now worth, um, let's see here. So our total invested was 5310 right now it's worth let's see 2530 plus 
375. So right now these trades are worth $6,905. I paid 5,310. So that means altogether I have a 30.04% return. So my I have a 30.40% return. Okay? So now what do I do? Well, let's take a look at Walmart. Let's take a look at it. Am I going to hold or am I going to take my profit now? Well, what did I tell you guys? What was our target? Our target was $100 a share. So what am I going to do now once the stock gets up to 100? I'm going to take the profit on that trade. Okay, let's get back to that because I want to show you guys the importance of making a detailed, detailed trade plan. It was never taught to you guys before. But that's why I'm going to be in the trade room. All right, let's take a look now. So what we're doing is once it gets up to that $100 a share target, we're going to take our profits, okay? Now, granted, this is a small trade for me, but, okay, so we're going to take our profit. What's our profit? 1575 but if it gets up to $100, i will probably have around a $3,000 um, profit on this, okay? So what would I do then with that $3,000 profit? With that $3,000 profit, if I still think Walmart's going to head higher up to that 105 target I talked about, whenever I make a target, I make ranges. Here's the low end. Here's the high end. Okay? And then let's take a look again. Let's take a look at the um, research that we went over. Here's what they're saying about Walmart. We have an average price target of 107.20, high end of 115, low of 95. So even if it did drop down to the low, that's only nine, uh, 3.89% to the downside. So, you know, like if you're entering a trade, you're looking where are your support resistance areas. That resistance area, that's going to be the low end of my target. That's that $100 a share. That's resistance. It gets there. I'm going to take profit. And like I said, guys, what I'm going to do now, um, like I said, you're doing so many different things to conclude a trade and to understand how large of a trade you want to make on it, um, the time frame of the trade, and uh, you know, you, then you're looking into the sector that it's in. How is that sector performing? You know, and we could go over that, you know, any time here because you could go into sectors. Uh, you know, like we could pull up sectors here, and then we could go and type in, like, let's say Walmart, for example. You know, we could type in, see what sector it's in, the retail sector. Uh, we could see how the retail sector is doing compared to um, other sectors. And, and, you know, like, take a look, guys. Retail sector, you know, what, what did I tell you guys? Retail, grocery, Walmart. You know, we're putting everything together. Do you notice? One day change, five day, 13, 13 week. Retail sectors all in the green. That's why our Walmart trade's doing so great, even when the markets are down. Because that sector is doing well. And that's important, guys. Like restaurants here. Restaurants are doing well right now. You know, look at the sectors that are performing well. When you're looking at the sectors and you're seeing them, you know, drop, 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 have big drops, then you know what? Say, okay, let's put that sector on our watch list for once we do have that rebound or that move we're looking for that uh, we can take advantage of it then. You know, because that's stuff you want to have ready. Okay, I'm going to take advantage of that once I see that base. If I see a big sell-off here, for example, conglomerates, you know, look at that one, Th down 13, 14, 18, 19, you know, I mean, write them down and understand. Casinos and gaming, horrible, you know, and this also gives you an understanding on what the economy is doing, what people are doing, you know, motion pictures, you know, people going to the movies, retail, you know, like it gives you an understanding of what's going on. Schools, you know, advertising, you know, it tells you what's going on in the economy. You know, advertising's been down for the past few months here, you know, the past several weeks. You're looking at that. You know, you're looking at a bunch of things here to give you an understanding of what the overall economy is doing. So back to Walmart now, guys. Like I said, what are we going to do? Well, once it hits our target, we're going to take our profits. We're going to move on and find a new trade. Any questions, guys? Okay, the day trade strategy. Oh, let's go over Costco quick. Costco, hit our target, you yeah, exit. And guys, let me go over this. This is something I was talking about before. Okay, usually I had this out. 
Okay, we entered on 10.9. Here was 10.9 on on Target, or not Target, Costco, I'm sorry. So on Costco, here was our entry on 10.9, okay? Um, I shared a chart once we had the double base here. I said once we get a green confirmation tomorrow, that was going to be our buy signal. And what happened? We got that green candle. That was our buy signal. The next day it went against us. But hey, you know what? That's okay. In the first few days, we're worried about it going below the base. That would have been our stop. And then once it has momentum, what we're looking for is a close below the previous day's low. So, and this is important, guys. I, I can't stress this enough, how important this one strategy right here is. Because I want to show you guys something. When we're in breakout mode or when we are have a successful hook pattern that's in motion and in play, notice how when it's climbing, it's not going below the previous day's low here. Okay, the wick here is the, is the low. The wick on the top is the high for the day. Okay, and then the body, this is just the opening and closing areas. Okay, so notice the wicks. As we're climbing here, we're not dropping below the previous day's low or closing below the previous day's low. And what I want to say now, and this is important, write this down, take a note, put it somewhere. When you're in a trade, one of our patterns, and you're in it for a while, this is a sign that momentum is climbing, okay? Once you get that first candle that crosses below the previous day's low, that's a sign that momentum has shifted, okay? That's why we took profits on Costco. We took half profits that day, okay? Because look at what happened. We're dropping below the previous day's low right here. You see how this wick here, you know, we're down below the previous day. We got a red candle, wick is lower. That's a sign momentum has changed. And what happened? It took four days then for it to continue to drop. Now it may come back up here, and that's what I'm expecting with a good hook pattern. It is Once you have a hook pattern, just like I said in yesterday's video, see how we were breaking out here? We were coming down to the 20-day SMA, breaking out. Coming down to the 20-day, breaking out. Coming down and breaking out. And then watch this. I told you guys even further, see how this right here was a stronger climb? See how there's a wave here? And there's a wave here. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. See how this rise is shallower and this rise here. Each one of these humps here, each one of these climbs and tops, that's a wave. So here's a wave, okay? And then here's a consolidation. Here's the wave. Here's the consolidation. Here's the wave, consolidation, wave, consolidation, wave, consolidation. So notice this wave is higher. How can we predict that? Or how do we trade that for larger profits? What did I tell you guys before on the strength of a move? Let's add the 10-day SMA in here now. Watch this. Look at this. When it came down to that 10-day, look at that. What did I tell you guys before? Strength is based on the SMAs. When it's coming down to the 20-day, it's a shallower climb. When it's bouncing off the 10 days, it's a sharper climb. That's why, that's why we went over this. Remember this on today's chart? Was it, was it Q's or was it, um, yeah, it was this one. Okay. So here is today's chart. And if you guys remember, I said, how do we capture these moves here, this move and this move? And I said that 10 day, right? Look, without it, where's our entries? We got to get rid of the 50. We didn't have that on there before. So how do we capture these gains? Let's get rid of the 200. You know, you have to understand, get rid of the things you don't need. Whatever you don't need should not be on your charts. And different sections, different strategies, different techniques, different patterns, you use different types of indicators and tools. Okay, so for this, we're using the SMAs. Right now, 20 day. Like I said, how do you capture that big move right there? How do you capture that big move? How do you capture that move? Okay, and this is what we're doing, guys. Watch, 10-day. Remember I told you the 10-day is going to tell us the strength or the, 
I told you guys the entries on the smaller and then your stop you're using a smaller SMA. So for example, you're using the 50 day SMA and then you're using the 20 day to close or you're using the 20 day as the entry and then the 10 day or the five day to close. Okay, so let's take a look. 10 day, yellow, watch what happens, boom. We got our clear entries, you know, above the blue, closes below the yellow, which is the 10 day. So we captured all of that and then there's your stop. Guys, mute yourself, please. AV. All right, so like I said, guys, and then if you want to go further and have a tighter stop to limit your losses even further, you could use the five-day SMA. And now that's getting pretty, you know, tight there, but you could do it. See, if you want to take advantage of a trade and have a tight loss, a stop loss, you could use the five day and then you notice here's your entry and then your exits right here. So the tighter, the smaller the SMAs you go for your loss, your stop loss or where to exit a trade, your target for a trade, the tighter you get, the smaller SMA you get, the smaller time frame your trades are going to be. So if you got in using the 20 day, you got in back here and then as soon as it crosses below five day, here's your stop. Now, if you're using the 20 and 10, your entry is down here. Your stop is a uh, move below the 10. Now your stop's here. So you see as you widen out a little bit, it's going to go further out. Here's your stop. Here's your stop. And then here's your stop. The sweet spot for me is always that 10-day. So I get rid of the 5-day. Now, the only time I do use a 5-day, for example, is a hook. Let's go over a hook pattern on Costco, for example. When will I use a hook pattern or when will I use the five day on something like this? When I first make a trade, sometimes I will use the five day to keep a tight, uh, a type stop. Let's go here. Let's use white. Okay. So as you can see here, again, guys, you know, our breakout moment or our hook pattern. Remember that trade we just went over? I don't know why it didn't come up just now. Let me bring it up over here. I want to show you guys this because this is important. I want you guys to make a plan, a detailed plan, just like I have. Make what works for you. Here is when we said our target was complete. Okay. You see here, I saved it. Cost hook pattern complete on October 19th. So that was six days ago. Cost hook complete. Okay. Now, what did we do? Okay. We got in the third day. Let's compare them side by side here. So here's the drop. Here's the drop. We got in. Okay. We need two candles to confirm a base, a minimum of two candles. We got two candles there that confirm the base of 220. Okay. We had a base of right around 220 there. All right, so the next candle, the green candle, was our entry. And now what are we looking for? Either A, we could use um, our normal strategy up to our target, or once we enter a trade, our base is going to be the stop loss, or you could use something like the five-day. And I'm showing you this for an example here because this is also going to tell you when it's time to take profits. Notice this, guys. Here's our hook pattern. Here's our entry. What did I say our target was our targets 229 to 233 okay but let's say costco did not hit our target yeah here i am putting my hand on the screen thinking you guys could see this but anyway this imagine it did not get to our target how would we have prevented ourselves from a loss on that trade you know we made beautiful gains on that of 70 or 80 percent but notice this guys we use that double bottom as the base for our entry the next green candle is our confirmation. And then what happens? There's our confirmation buy. Okay. And then we're climbing, climbing. Notice once the stock drops below that five day, that's a momentum shift, guys. That's a momentum shift. That's when you exit. Didn't you notice the other day when I said, guys, exit Costco, take profits? That was why. 
Okay, we reached our target and then we got a momentum shift. This is why I'm saying, guys, it's so clear if you follow a strategy. You know, like someone was asking about American Airlines today. Okay, let's go over that. This is why I don't care about stuff like this. You know, here, we're at a base. We're at a bottom here. You know, let's zoom out a little bit. You know, they're saying, buy, buy, buy. Why are you buying? It, it didn't give you the signal yet. Wait for those signals, just like day trading, guys. Let's go on today's chart here. You know, here, we get rid of the five-day. You're not using that. You know, yes, you're getting nice breakouts today. Some breakouts you could have traded. Remember, between the SMAs, you're not trading. You know, that's garbage. You're not trading between the SMAs. You want those. And let's go even further into detail. What we're looking for, notice how when the stock's breaking out here, notice how the bodies are above each body. Okay, see how the body here, this body isn't between or in between or engulfed in it. Like, see, notice the body here is the same as the body over here. They're connected. They're side by side. Notice how they're separated here. Here's a body, and then there's like a little gap and then another body. Little gap, another body. Okay, so that's what you're looking for, guys. And like right here on American Airlines. But if you zoom out and look at it, what is that telling us? You know, first off, we have now resistance right around 3360. Uh, yeah, 3360 a share. Okay. Now, I like how this is shifting here. I like how the MACD, we're getting a crossover. I do like how um, it's at the bottom of the RSI. That's nice. Adam, you brought this one up. You know, here's what to look for now. As you can see, the stock has had a, a significant drop from over $45 a share all the way down to around $29 a share, $30 a share. That's a substantial decline there of that stock. Okay, so it needs a 50% return. If the stock's at 30, what's half of 30? 15. 30 plus 15 is 45. So to get back up to 45, this stock needs to make a 50% um, climb. That's crazy. Think about that. This stock needs to climb 50% to get back to where it was just um, four months ago, less than four months ago. So think about that, guys. I want you to think about that. Why are you going to enter there when it's not giving you the signal yet? First off, if it right now the stock's at 32.88, here's the 20 day. We get across above that, that would be a nice entry. That's at 34.32. Or what we could say is once we get a cross above um, resistance right here at 33.50. You know, it's, the stock's at 32.92 right now. So wait, give it that extra 50 cents to give you that confirmation, you know? It's worth it. It's definitely worth it. And then if you entered into a trade like this, what's going to be your stop? Well, it's simple. Either close below the 10-day or you could use your base here for the short term. You know, since it's already close to that 10-day, you could use the base here of 31. I would use 31 as my stop. So it's still $2. Now you have to understand, too, what, are, what time frame are you looking at, guys? What time frame? You know, because if you look at this, each one of these candles represent one day. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you have to understand, for 12 trading days... That's, and that's not including weekends or not market days. So that's over a half of a month there. That's like 17 days. 17 days it did absolutely nothing but stay in that range. You know, this is what you're looking for, guys. Remember breakdown momentum? Just like we have break up, break, break up momentum or breakout momentum, we have breakdown. Breakdown is when the stock is below the SMAs and failing to bounce. See how it came down here? It went up to that 10-day, a little bit above, and then it bounced and retraced. You know, Right now, I do think we have a double bottom here. I do think it's going to start to increase. I do think American Airlines will start to increase, uh, as, as well as probably Delta. Because then what you want to do, guys, is look and compare. Here you go. Delta looks better here. Delta is above the 20 and 10-day right now. So that's a nice sign right there. You know, you got your crossover right here. You got an oversold RSI. 
And look at here how well it performed with these SMAs. Guys, notice this. I want you guys to in, uh, you know, embed this into your brain. Sear it in there. See how it's coming down to the 10-day, uh, increasing. Coming down to the 10-day, increasing. Coming down to the 10-day, increasing. My strategy helps you make money during these time frames. Okay? I'm not looking to trade patterns like this. This is garbage right here between the SMAs. Right here, this would have been a nice time to buy puts. You know, right now, a green candle the next day with a 10 above the, the, the 20. Notice here, guys, what happened when we had the drop. This is a perfect example, guys. Please listen carefully. We're in the same situation right now. Look at this. We had the drop right here, and then what happened? We had the drop right here. What happened? We increased a bit, right? And we increased a bit. Same thing, same situation. What happened? The 10 dropped just like here. Here's the 20, here's the 10. Here's the 20, here's the 10. What happened? That 10 day came up and crossed above the 20 day SMA. What happened then? The stock broke out. Okay? Look at here. Same damn thing that happened over here. We had the drop. We're having the 10 day cross above the 20 day, and then we rallied. And then look at here. You had the drop, the 10-day crossing above the 20-day, and now what's going to happen? Are we going to rally? And now here's a stock that you want to put on your watch list, D-A-L. Now let's even – here, let's analyze this fully, okay? These are the things you're looking for, guys. You have the rising RSI. You have the MACD crossover. You're seeing the patterns that, you know – simulate what the stock has done in the past and what it's likely to do it's all about probability and number guys so let's take a look at delta dal so what are we looking for first off guys we're looking at the time frame when this crossed above here what kind of time frame did we need to move okay so we're right here right now about so 717 of 08 so at least a month out i'd want to go so that's not bad. So instead of November 16th Expo, let's say we'll use, um, so here's the normal monthly Expo. Let's use the December monthly Expo. Let's see. Now, first off, guys, what do we have to do? We have to look and see, is Delta reporting earnings, dividends, anything like that? We come down here and take a look. Delta earnings on the 11th. So I already had earnings. When was this? This is probably right around the 11th when it dropped. When was the 11th here? So here was the 11th. So it must have had pretty good earnings because it had earnings and it went higher. All right, so it already had earnings. Let's see if there's any dividends, anything we need to worry about. There's dividends coming up on the 6th. That's why it's important to do this, guys. Remember, have a checklist. Just like I told you guys, I'm a pilot. I have a pre-flight checklist, pre-engine checklist, you're seeing what's going on with that aircraft before you even get in. And the same thing here. You're seeing what's going on before you even enter into the stock. It's really important, guys. Have that routine. Have that set up. So we see earnings already happen. Now we have dividends coming up on the 6th. So I want to be out of that trade by the 6th. So you take a mental note and you say, okay, uh, let's be out of this trade by the 6th if we're, um, if we're, you know, if we're doing a spread. If we're doing regular calls, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so right now, Delta. Let's take a look at the December 21st. Now, what's our target? Okay, let's first now analyze that. All right, so where were we at here? 50.85. So I'm going to calculate this, guys. 50.85, that was where we were at last time. And you don't do this all the time, guys. I'm just doing this to show you... Um, you know, how you have to analyze and what you have to look for. So 50.85, and then where did it get to in a little over a month from then? So let's use, eight, so the ninth. So the ninth was somewhere right around here. All right, so let's just go down to here, use that. So 57.25. I'm do, Now see, notice how I'm using the lower end of the targets here. You know, I'm not going all the way to, um, to uh, what's it, September 4th. I'm going back down here because I want to be as conservative as possible with my projections, okay? So like I said, if you entered into this at 50.85 and then you exited at 57.25,
what type of return is that if you only own the um, shares of stock? So 57.25, divide that by 50.85, that's a 12.59% return. The stock increased 12.59% in that time frame. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, 12.59, keep that in mind, guys. All right, so let's put in DAL. Now, this is going to tell us what the implied move is for the next seven days. So it's expecting a 4% basically over the, next, um, over the next seven days. Our time frame is a little over a month. So we're going to take this current stock price, 53.71. 53.71, multiply that by, let's use uh, 6%. So times that by 1.06. So that means we could expect shares right around 57 okay now here's the next thing where is the support and resistance okay so we have some resistance right around 57 so that's going to be a nice target i would actually put the target between 56 and 57 so what do i do i come up i draw a channel so target then is 56 to 58. Okay. And then what do we do? What's our entry? What's our exit? Well, our entry is going to be a green candle tomorrow. It's as simple as that. Okay, we have the cross above the SMAs here. What I don't want to see, guys, like I've been telling you guys, is getting up to it and then failing and then dropping. That's why we need that confirmation the next day. And that's extremely important, guys. Just because it's above the SMAs now means crap. That doesn't mean anything. We want that green confirmation tomorrow. So what we're doing right now, we're setting up a possible trade. We're writing that down. We're putting that in our trade journal. We're putting that in our notebook. Okay, here's a possible trade for tomorrow. What we need to see on Delta is that green candle. A green candle tomorrow, and we would enter. Then, what, what type of trade would we look for? Well, let's look at the option chain now. Okay, let's use the December 21st Expo as an example. So if our target's 56 to 58, let's add on our Greeks here. So let's put on Delta, and let's put on Theta. Okay, and it's important that you guys understand what's delta, what's theta. Theta is time decay. Delta is for every dollar the stock goes up, that's how much this, this option is going to increase in value. So if we bought the 52.50 and delta went up by $1 right now, this option that's worth $3.13 would increase by about $0.60. Cents. So it would be worth $3.75 if delta just increased by another dollar. And it's as simple as that. Theta is your time decay for each day if the stock remains where it's at. So it's gonna lose two cents, a little bit more than two cents per day time value. Okay, and that's as simple as that. Theta is how much this option is gonna lose each day from time decay. Because tick tock, tick tock, you know, we're counting down until expiration day. So as the closer we get to expiration day, theta is going to increase and we're going to continue to drop. Okay, and you would notice that theta will continue to increase and you're going to see that as you get closer to expo. Okay, so now let's take a look and you can see how they are compared to with other options here. You know, the deltas, the thetas, usually you want a delta of at least 0.50. Now, let's go back here to Delta chart. I had it linked. That's why I brought that up. So let's go back to Delta. All right, so if we get that green confirmation tomorrow, then what are we going to look for? Well, let's take a look here. If we did the 5250, stock's at 5372 now. So you know what? We're better off using the 55 strike. Let's use the 55. So the 55 strike call, right? And 
I'd rather use, I'd really rather use the 5250, but the 55 would be okay. Me personally, I would use the 5250, but, and then I would use the 10 day as the stop. But let's, let's calculate this then. So if we bought this 5250, 52.50 strike call for Delta. If we bought that for, right now it's worth $3.12. And it has a delta of 0.59 and a theta of 0.022. Okay. So let's say it gets to our, uh, let's say, 57 target uh, by, let's say, November 16th. So let's just say in 20 days. 20 days, it'll be at 57. Okay, so how can we calculate what this is going to be worth and how we can trade it? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the 5250. That's the strike we're buying. So 5250. Now uh, minus that by our target. So what do we say our target was? 57. So 57 minus 5250. How much does that come out to here? Get a calculator because you're going to need it for theta and, de and delta. Okay, so 57 minus 52.5. That's $4.50. So that's our expected climb. So now what we do is we take 4.5. That's the climb from where it's at to where our target is. So 4.5, multiply that by a delta. I'm running out of paper here. So 4.5 times your delta right here is 0.589. So 4.5 times 0.589. And that equals 4.5 times 0.589. That means $2.65 this is going to increase by. Okay, so it was worth, we paid $3.12. So 312 plus 265 equals 577. Okay, so it's that's going to be worth 577. Now we have to take account of theta, time decay. So like I said, if that's in 20 days, let's um, take away that time decay. So 20 days times theta of 0 0.022 equals 20 times 0 0.022. So that's 44 cents. So now we take that 577, 5.77 minus 0.44. So 5.77 minus 0.44, that's 5.33. So now you see something we paid $3.12 for is now worth $5.77 um, if it gets to our 57 target. Now, what's the percent return? And this is taking in account of delta, theta, time decay, um, our strike price, you know, market conditions, our time frame. So this is what I mean about details, guys. You don't understand or see the back work that's involved. And this is what's important, guys, is knowing the details like we're doing now. So now how do we pick, hey, what do we expect uh, a trade like this to return? You don't just freaking go out there and, and throw a dart and say, oh, this one's going to do a 75% return. This one, I think, is going to do 150%. What we're doing is we're making, you know, easy but somewhat complex mathematical calculations here of our target and the stock price it's at now. Uh, we're multiplying those by the delta, theta, our strike price, our target prices, and we're coming up with our possibilities. So, like I said, um, if we bought it for $3.12 and taking into account delta and theta and our target, so this could be worth $5.77, right? So 5.77, divide that by, or I'm sorry, we had the minus by the $0.44, cents, so it's $5.33. So 5.33, and we paid 3.12, okay? 
So 5.33, divide that by 3.12. This, tar- this trade can make around a 70.83% return. So now what do we do, guys? And this is important. Listen to this. So if we made a trade on Delta right here, and we bought the 5250 straight call right now, we now have a specific stop which is a candle below the previous day's low, or actually on this type of trade, it would not be something like that. We would have a set point because this is a different type of strategy, a a different type of uh, chart pattern. It's not a hook pattern is what I'm saying. A hook pattern is what we're using as the previous day low, or if we have a short-term trade. This is a longer term trade, so what I would use on a stop like this is a close below the past four candle lows. So here, for example, we would go uh, one, two, three, four. So a close below this, uh, we'd be out. So if we entered on this date, you know, one, two, three, four, a close below this area right here would be our stop. So our stop is the previous four day low of those candles. Whatever the lowest candle is on those four candles, that's going to be a stop for me on a trade that's longer than 30 days out. And that's important, guys. That's detail you need to pay attention to. A trade that's longer than 30 days out, you're using four or five days uh, previous candles low as your stop. Okay, on a short term trade like a weekly or a two week out, you're using that, you know, probably one or two day candle low as your stop point or support or your SMAs. Like I said, once you have a good trade going again, going with you, you know, it's going to follow all those rules. So if you enter into a trade and, oh, the next day it's below the SMAs and the next day it drops below support, that's a sign that, hey, things are starting to go against you, you know. Just, just again, like flying, you know, like if something goes against you, you abort it. You abort that mission. You abort that flight plan. Same thing with trading, guys. You know, you follow specific details of a trading plan, and you're going to make substantial returns. Why do you think Dr. Phil Nicholson is doing so great here? You see, like, uh, there's so many traders posting great results, you know, and these are usually the more advanced traders, the detailed traders. You know, they're doing well because they follow a system. And that's what I'm trying to teach you guys is to follow a system. You know, for example, like I said here, Delta, yes, it looks okay now. You know, we're getting that crossover, but tomorrow would be the confirmation, okay? What we're trying to do is reduce risk, reduce um reduce our potential for a stock going against us, guys. You know, that's important. Okay, so like I said, guys, so a trade like this, if we got in at 3.10 or 3.12, and we said, okay, our target's 57. We, I just showed you how to calculate the possible return. And, and once you do that, then you're saying, okay, if I enter into this trade, I'm looking for around a 50 to a 70% return. And once you reach that return, guys, get out and find a new trade. It's that simple. Don't stay in and get greedy. You know, don't stay in and hope and wish. You know, follow the plan, follow the details. It's that simple, you know. I'm teaching you guys this. I'm taking away from trading because I want to see you guys do well. I want to be able to, I want you guys to come to me and say, Dave, I'm finally able to capture these runs right here. Dave, I'm finally able to quickly go from calls, uh, you know, into the no trade zone. This is the X mark. You know, like, look at this, guys. And, and this is the type of mental note you want, to, uh, you want to put on charts when you see them. You know, because it's really important. This right here, that's your no trade zone. You know, see how it's between the SMAs? See this? That's your no trade zone. Okay? I want you to take mental note. I'm trying to throw everything at you here so you can understand, you know, what to look for, how to trade it, you know? You know, and then what are we looking for here?
Here you go. Here's your cross above the the 20 day here. Okay? And then you're following your plan. Okay? So you take a mental note. And then right here, okay, you're going from breakout moment to here, right here again. Here's your no trade zone. Okay, I want you guys to be able to see this because this is important. If you guys could actually see this, you'll be able to follow along with us at TSE and the members that are doing extremely well. That's your no trade zone. It's between the SMAs. It's not doing crap. Here, how about this then? Let's look at this. Take a look. This is going to be a good target for you guys. So here, here is trade opportunities. Okay, just like here, let's do the uh, check. This is a check for puts. Okay, here you go. You got your close or your move below your 10 and 20 day. Okay, right here. This was your entry for puts. Here was your entry for calls, you know, and you see then right here. This is where you're covering that. Okay, so let's make another one. So there you go. There's your entry for a put. Let's even mark this. Let's let's make this as detailed as I could get for you guys. There's your entry and your exit for your puts, the check marks. See that checks? You're entering when you cross below the 10, 20 day SMA, and you're selling those puts once you cross above the 10 day SMA, that yellow line. So you're buying here, you're selling here. And then once you cross above the blue and yellow, that's when you're entering, okay? And then what are you doing when you're selling? You're either using your 10 or your 20 day, depending on the strength of that breakout. When it's in between SMAs, you're not trading. See how the stock's in between SMAs? When it's in between SMAs, you notice it doesn't do much. It doesn't do much. It's just flat, stagnant, okay? So what you're looking for are these phases, okay? Now, again, right here, you got another let me do this. Right here again, you got your another entry. Okay? So there's your put entry and exit. And then your call. So do you see now, guys, by following a system, how easy it is to follow a plan and work it? and make money do you see this no trade zone here's your signal your signal is a cross below the smas here once it crosses above the 10 day that's when you sell your puts and you take your profits okay then you're out of the trade okay and this is just going based on one chart here guys you know like you're taking into account a lot of things okay um, you know, different sectors, you know, because you want to get the highest probability trades that have the largest room to move higher that you can make the largest profits from. Okay, so look at this. So we have our put entry and exit. Our entry for puts is a cross below the 10, 20 day SMA. And then we sell those puts for a profit once it crosses above the 10 day SMA. You see, look at that gain there. 54.46 all the way down to 49.90. That's a huge, huge problem. With puts, that's over a 200% return. No doubt about that. No doubt. Now here, calls. What are you doing for calls? You're waiting for a cross above the 10, 20-day SMA, okay? And above the 50-day SMA, which I don't have on here, but you're waiting for that. And then you're guiding and seeing where the stock's going down to on the first downturn. Because remember, guys, waves. And I'm telling you, this is going to be the most detailed class. This is what I go over with people that pay me $6,000 a week in for. All right? So what we're looking for then is that first wave. 
this first wave, what it's going to tell us is the strength and the bottom. Okay, so guys, put your microphones on mute, please. I've been saying that for 20 times. Minaj, you're you're still on. Um, you still got your mics on. Minaj Sheath, please. Well, you'd like me to see. Here, I blocked. I blocked you. There you go. All right. So now, guys, again, what are you looking for? Well, that first wave, and then that retracement. What's going to happen? When you have that first wave and that retracement, that's going to tell you where it's getting down to. So if you see this first wave here, once you broke that 10, 20 day SMA, that first wave and retracement, that uh, profit consolidation phase, where is it going down to? A little below the 10 day. So in my mind, when that happens, I'm going to say, okay, um, you know, this is where that first wave went. So that might be where the next waves go down to. So that's okay if it's not bouncing right off the 10-day, you know. It's still closing above it. You notice, remember what I said, guys. I don't care what happens during the day. The market noise is nothing. That's why I don't even like coming into the trade room until the afternoon. You know, I do like coming in, seeing what's going on in the morning. But as far as, you know, see, you know, like the new traders that are new to trading <laughs> – Dave, what do you do today? You know, like, I, guys, that's normal market movement. Don't be worried about normal market noise. Worry about the direction. Worry about the trend that we're in. I don't care what happens during the day because, as you could see, stocks move. That's what they do. Remember what I said to look for. You're looking for the candle. If the bodies are above each body, that's a sign you have strength and a strong momentum. If it's in between, like here, the no trade zone, if it's trading between, you know, stay away. It's garbage. You know, that's not even something you should be looking at. Now, what you want to do, you want to focus on these moves that you have consistent and decisive entry and exit points. Okay? Like these three here on this chart. Okay, so going back again to that wave, what happened? Came down to that 10-day a little bit below, but it, it closed above. That's great. Okay, now look at the candles, too, for the retracement times. We had a big increase, and then what's the retracement time? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Guys, do you see the pattern? These are the consolidation profit phases. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, increase, and then one, two, three, four, five. Increase, one, two, three, four, five. And then consolidate, one, two, three. Increase one, two, three, four, five, and then decrease one, two, three. You see, guys, it's all about numbers, it's all about math. Three low, three low, and then climb, and then five climb. One, two, three, four, five, and again here, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, oh, I moved that by accident. So that's what you're looking for, guys. Look for those patterns. Give me a stock you want me to go over quick, and I'll go over it. Someone type in a stock in the chat quick. DIA. Okay. Let's look at DIA. Oh, shit. I wanted to take a picture of that. Ah, this is recording. I can take a picture of it later. All right, guys. Same thing with Diamond. Look at this, guys. Notice the momentum in the market. The momentum in the market is breakout here. See how we're breaking out above the SMAs. We're coming down to the 20-day and bouncing. Coming down to the 20-day, bouncing. Down, bouncing. And notice the, the, notice the candles. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Look at how you can predict the wave higher you have four candles you have four candles you have four candles and then you have one two and then you have here one two three before the next wave here one two three and then you're going higher you know notice that and guys look at what's going on right now in the market we're failing to break above the 10-day so just like breakout momentum 
we're now in breakdown momentum. And take a look what happened. Take a look what happens when you're – and, guys, just look at this right now. Notice the, the yellow is below the blue. Usually when we're climbing, the yellow is above the blue. Okay? I want you guys to understand. It's simple stuff, but I want you to understand this. Okay, like here, see how you're going above, below, above, below? That's the no trade zone, guys. That's where you stay away. Do you see how simple it is, guys? It's really that easy. Here, here's breakout. Here's breakout momentum. Here's breakout momentum, the three charts we go over. This is what I want you to ultimately learn to capture are these types of moves. Okay, here, no trade zone. No trade zone. Remember, between the SMAs, you don't have a clear uh, yellow above the blue here. You know, nothing's going in your favor. The RSI is flat. See the MACD down here? That's flat. That's garbage. Stay away. Stay away. Here, you could have got puts. You know, you could have got puts. Use the five-day uh, SMA to, you know, cover your puts or, or sell your puts as your target. But anyway, back to this, guys. No trade zone. Here's your breakout momentum. Furthermore, like I said now, on our chart right now, you guys see what's happening. The yellow is below the blue, and look at the MACD down here. Look at this MACD, and look at the RSI, and now let's look, okay? And remember, yellow below the blue, okay? When we're in breakout momentum, when the market's climbing, yellow above the blue. Look at MACD. White above the red and climbing. Look at when we're in breakout mode. We're climbing RSI. You know, now let's go back and look. Here, breakout momentum. This is the one I just went over. How long of a time frame was this? Uh, November 28th to January 26th, so two months. So when you're making a trade, guys, you're saying, okay, this ran for two months. Why the hell are you going to get a weekly expo? You know, what if you got, what if you entered right here uh, and said, okay, I, I, or right here and said, okay, we're down um, to that 10 day close enough and uh, I'm going to enter a weekly because I want to make some large profits. I want to capture a move like that. And if you did that right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's seven trading days. That's not counting weekends. So you're probably back here um, and, and the trade's worthless. That's why I tell you guys, give yourself enough time for Expo. The more time you give yourself for Expo, the larger time frame you have to capture moves like this. And when they're following our chart pattern, that's exactly what we want. All right, now let's go here again, guys. Look, look, breakout momentum, breakout momentum. You know, let's make that bigger so you can see it here. Look, 10 is above the 20 day. And what happens? Big climb. Look at right here. This is your no trade zone. It's between SMAs. No trade zone. Breakout momentum right here. No trade zone. Breakout momentum. Look at that. Look at that climb there. Now, remember what I said um, with the moving average. Let's put the five day. I bet you that's well above the... Watch this. I'm going to show you guys how incredible this is. Look at that. Why did I just put that white line there? Because in my mind, I've been a trader for a long time. I know what that's going to look like. So look at that. You got your entry on a close above the 1020 day. Here was your entry. Where's your close? You could have done it here, but no, because it ended the day above the white. If it's red, that means the candle's lower than where it opened. If it's opened hollow like that, that means it opened down here, closed up here. Okay, so it's still closed above the five day. So your entry was right here and your close wasn't until up here. You see how you use that. Now, if you didn't have the if you didn't have the five day, you could have said, OK, um, here would have been your next exit point a little bit before. Someone's calling my house. Now the maid is here. I told her I was doing videos during this time. It really upsets me when people don't pay attention to instructions or detail. All right, guys. So, again, back here, she's going to have to wait. So, back here, uh, like I said, there's breakout momentum. You know, I'm trying to show you guys. Now, let's see what happens when we went below. I want you guys to see this. 
when we went below, you were looking for the white or the yellow below the blue. Here we go. Here it is. All right, guys. So just the same thing here. This is what we're at now. And let's say we're right here. Just because we're getting up to that white, uh, the yellow 10-day SMA, that's not a buy signal to uh, think we're going to trend higher all of a sudden. You know, we got up to it. We failed. We broke below. Even right here, the next day we got up. You know, people, the 90% of traders that fail are the ones on this day saying, oh, wow, look at that candle here. We're up 300 points today. Let me buy some calls for next week's expo. And then what happens? It's going lower, and they lose. Why? Because they didn't follow the specific details for a trade plan. And that's what we do at TSE. We teach you the strict details. Here, breakout momentum. Guys, I made a YouTube video on the three types of chart patterns we trade. Breakout momentum, hook, and channel range bound. You see, there's specific ways to trade breakout momentum. Here's your no trade zone. Here's your breakdown momentum, okay? And then you have your hook patterns. So is there any other questions, guys? I gotta let this, uh, this lady in to clean here. Any other questions? I'm gonna post this to YouTube. I'm gonna have him work on editing this. It was a great video. And then we'll go over the other 15 minute opening day uh, range breakout for um, another day trade um, strategy technique that you could use. We'll do that a little bit later today. But for right now, guys, take a look and look at that. That's what you're looking for. Just because it's up today, that doesn't mean we're going to start climbing. See how it's coming up to that 10-day failing and breaking lower? We want to wait until that crosses below. And right here, guys, if, if this... Um, what we want to see for a confirmation is the yellow to cross above the blue. If the yellow crosses above the blue, that's a, sh that's a sign then that we are now over this downtrend and we're going to start trending higher. If we see this blue cross below the yellow or the yellow cross above the blue. If the yellow crosses above the blue, that's going to be our entry signal. That's going to be a sign that the markets are reversing, and then we can start buying some calls into the holiday cyclical trend. All right, she's banging. I'm going to have to go teach her. She can't do this. All right, guys, I'm going to go now. I'll be back in the trade room in two minutes. Take care, guys.